In the 1950s and 60s, an angelic beauty reigned over the Indian cinema. Stories of her captivating charm traveled across the world so much that even the Life magazine showcased her iconic photographs. Often nicknamed the Venus of Indian cinema, this young lady acted in around 70 films before bidding bye to this world, that too at a tender age of 36. Any idea who I'm talking about? Hey folks, I'm Arya and in this episode of Real Stories, let's delve into the life of Begum Mumtaz Jahan Dailavi, aka Bollywood's very own Madhubala. Real Stories Most of you, the youngsters of Gen Z, may not have watched movies from the 50s or 60s. Still, I think you would have heard the name Madhubala somewhere or the other. Am I right? So who was Madhubala? What was so special about her? And why was she called the beauty with tragedy? Let's take a tour, shall we? Madhubala was born into a conservative Muslim Pashtun family in 1933. She was the most celebrated Bollywood actress in the 50s and 60s. Everyone admired her beauty so much that her acting skills were often overlooked. Madhubala and her family shifted to Bombay after her father, Athaula Khan, lost his job in Delhi. She made a Bollywood debut as a child artist at the age of 9 in 1942 through the movie Basant, the highest grossing Indian film of the year. So much for a child artist, don't you think? While in the sets, the film's producer, Devika Rani, who was spellbound by this young girl's beauty, asked her to take Madhubala as a stage name. That's how Begum Mumtaz Jahan became the renowned Madhubala of the movies. Within years, she became Bollywood's heartbeat and went on to act in numerous movies such as Neel Kamal, Mehal, Mr. and Mrs. 55, Mughalay Asam, Kala Pani, Chalti Ka Naam Gadi, Howra Bridge, Passport, among many others. She even garnered Hollywood attention. Once, Academy Award-winning American director Frank Capra wanted to bring Madhu to Los Angeles. Unfortunately, her father turned down the offer. Professionally, everything was going exceptionally well for Madhubala. But in her love life, things were quite a bit fragile. In 1951, Madhu got involved in a romantic relationship with actor-director Prem Nath. It was a first love but didn't last long. Both of them got separated after six months of dating due to different religious backgrounds. Apparently, Prem Nath asked Madhubala to convert to Hinduism, which she blatantly refused. Later on, she found a new partner in actor Dilip Kumar. The duo fell in love while shooting for Tarana and went on to work in several movies together. They even got engaged. However, a major plot twist occurred after a conflict arose between Dilip Kumar and Madhubala's father, Athaula Khan, over a shooting location. Let me tell that story. The year was 1957. Madhu and Dilip were filming for Naya Daur. The crew wanted to shoot a scene in Gwalior where a mob attack had taken place lately. According to Madhu's sister, a violent mob had attacked women in the area and they even tore off their clothes. Concerned over his daughter's safety, Athaula Khan demanded a change of location. But the film's producer was adamant and not willing to do so at all. And Dilip Kumar also sided with the producer. So, the situation wasn't. The issue was dragged into court and things got messed up really bad. Finally, Dilip and Madhu broke up and parted ways. It was after this that Madhubala met popular playback singer Kishor Kumar. Kishore, who was already in love with Madhu's beauty, proposed her and she said yes immediately without much thought. They tied the knot in 1960. Many say that Madhu married Kishore out of mere stubbornness and anger towards Dilip. Anyhow, we cannot comment on that now. It's been years after all. Madhubala's fairy tale did not have a happy ever after. Unfortunately, she was diagnosed with ventricular septal defect, a hole in her heart that made her cough a lot and even vomit blood. Kishore took her for treatment in London, but the doctor said she had only two years left to live. She was also advised to take bed rest, but Madhubala continued to work 
thinking that her films would suffer otherwise. The reports say that her health was so bad that she had to be given oxygen every four to five hours. Her sister once said that Madhu used to cry and say, "Mujhe zinda rehna hai, mujhe marna nahi hai." That is, she wanted to live and not die. Seeing that her acting career reached its final abort, Madhu even ventured into directing, but she could not finish the project. On February 23rd, 1969, within days after her 36th birthday, Madhubala bit by to this world. She was reportedly depressed during her final days and lived separated from her husband Kishore Kumar due to unconfirmed reasons. Her grave was carved with pure marble and in 2008, the India Post released a postage stamp in memory of the actress. There ends the story of Madhubala, an actor who was quite peculiar in her choices and always wanted Lata Mangeshkar to do her playbacks. A beauty who loved animals and kept 18 dogs at her house. She also had a wonderful collection of swanky cars, but was lost in love. Madhubala was indeed a beauty queen, gone too soon. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for next week's real stories. Bye bye.